this is Pastor Dwayne and Sue Sheriff, and uh, thank you guys so much. And we know that you're actually on sabbatical this yes, month. Yes, you had to bring and that up. <laughs> yes, well, no, it's actually really good because ministry and rest and things yeah. like that, and you guys have given us an hour of your time. So yes. we just want to say thank you for this because we have a lot of people watching. In our, yeah, and, and just make sure everybody knows you cannot Facebook any of this because of people watching me to make sure I am on sabbatical. <laughs> so, and, and again, thank you for setting that example of taking a sabbatical. Yes. Because so oftentimes people won't do that. They'll push themselves and they'll get burned out. And yeah. that's when they... They'll do a Saturday, Sunday, like yeah. when just one Sunday, so obviously I rested, right? Yeah. Right. I know we're going to start taking a month of rest. Good. That's our that's our commitment next good. next uh, year. Very we're saving good. up, and we've even got the kids it's deciding the where we're going to go. Well, and let me know when that awesome. month is. I will call you, <laughs> and I'll do an interview. <laughs> you might have to come overseas to do it. Yeah, so. we're going to be like, I'm in, Amy, She's too. In. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but, uh, so we just want to ask you guys some questions just about, um, marriage and family and ministry and just how you put it all together to be able to glorify God and just maybe a little bit about yourselves and how long have you guys been married and, and when and where did you guys meet? Well, we uh, celebrate 38 years in November. The, so, the 26th. Yeah. Good. Wow. Good. Good job. That's impressive. It's only taken him 38 years to get there, but that's good. Hey, that's why I've been patient and great. Um, we actually met in Florida um, when I graduated college. It would, had been a um, uh, blizzard, and I had to get south. Yes. Like, I'd had enough of snow <laughs> up to here and above. And um, so anyway, I, I, I first moved to Arkansas. And that's where I got filled with the Spirit, which was an incredible journey for me. And then on to <clears throat> Florida. And it actually that my apartment was above the tennis courts where he taught tennis. Ah. And the interesting thing is, um, you know how you just learn things by accident sometimes and just, you know it, mm -hmm. but then you experience it? Mm -hmm. Well, when I'd have my windows open, I'd hear him teaching tennis. And I was drawn to the window. And I'm telling myself, this is really kind of stupid because you're not even an athlete. And, and yet you're listening. True. And this it is, is true. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is true. I'm not an athlete. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, it was just his teaching. That way I was drawn to the window. It was the way he explained things to them. It was his patience with his students. Uh, I was just drawn to it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, didn't think I had any chance because there was always this woman with a kid hanging around. So I actually thought he was married and had a kid. Oh. But that wasn't the case. And, so. and how long have, have you been in ministry? Wow, we've been in ministry since 1982. So 36 years. 36 years. So the first couple of years, just being married, what, what was the, how did you know that you were called to ministry? How was that transition as a couple? Go ahead if you want to, that'd be awesome if you'd like to share on it. Um, well, we knew there was a call. Um, I don't know if I can backtrack on our story just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, when I was just drawn to the window, I really felt the Lord spoke to me that I would be ministering to Him. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't understand it. Um, it scared me, to be totally honest, because, um, you know, the boy-girl thing and the emotional things, you know, you mix kind of that spiritual and that emotional, it like getting a little technical. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I avoided it for a while. Um, but then he just opened the door for that. And um, uh, he actually asked me to play tennis, and I was really honest and said I couldn't, and he didn't believe me until he played with me. And then oh he my said, gosh. You. She told the truth. She, she could not get the ball back to me. I'd hit it to her, and she'd hit it over the fence. It bounced off the apartment porches behind me and in and the you're parking like, I'm lot. I'm going to have to marry He's this lady exactly. to, to, to exactly. fix this. I have exactly. never failed That's at what teaching he anything. <laughs> I so I married her to teach her life. tennis, and yes. I'm still 38 years later. I, I'm still not trying. failing at this. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thank God my children inherited my genes. Uh, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> but anyway, um, uh, God just opened the door through that experience for um, me to minister to him. It was just actually... A, a extremely supernatural night, um, and I don't know if you want me to get into the whole story, but it it was very funny, but yet very supernatural, 
and um, uh, he actually got scared coming into my apartment because I had Bibles everywhere, and I could see it on his face. Uh, oh, man, I walked into that place. So you weren't a believer. Well, I had accepted the Lord early okay. in life. Yes. And I had tried to serve the Lord. My brother got killed in a car accident. It led to a divorce in my family, and it, it just everything collapsed. <clears throat> and so I just basically thought I couldn't serve God anymore. And so I was in a backslidden condition. And when I went up into her apartment and I realized this girl loves Jesus, there's religious stuff everywhere. She's like 400 I, Bibles. Not I, right. She did. <laughs> she did. And I thought, I, I, need, to, I need to get away from this girl. I'm not a good influence. I had a sensitive heart still, but mm -hmm. I was living in sin. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was living in sin. So I, I asked her, do you have a bathroom? I need to use the bathroom. And I just wanted to go into the bathroom, get my story together, come out and be nice, and just leave. Mm -hmm. I went into the bathroom and there was a Bible on the back of the toilet. <laughs> I could not believe it. Who puts a Bible on the back of their toilet? I just, I just wanted to think, hey, and I'm in I the Holy Vatican now. Uh, the throne and the, <laughs> with the Bible in it. And I just panicked, and I just told her, I, I need to go. And uh, I believe the Lord spoke to me that she could answer my questions. Mm -hmm. So I, I made an excuse up and said, I was only a mile away. Let me go change and, and clean up and, and then come back and and because she'd already tried to to witness to me and I'm, I'm whoa mm -hmm. and so I did I went home changed came back uh, and, and it was funny when I met him at the door he had this stack of photo albums and I knew in my heart that he was he was out to prove God he was unlovable that he could not be loved by God mm -hmm. and I was so thankful I knew that by the Spirit because then I wasn't shook. I wasn't yeah. shook by any question he asked. And what about this? I've done this and I've done that. And it's like, God still loves you. Yeah. That's and awesome. so it was an incredible it, evening it, it of amazing. him answering questions and me being able to answer scripturally, mm -hmm. not just my opinion, right. not just, yeah. but scripturally. And because I knew, God knew that's what he needed. He needed to, the word and needed to know the word. That's and, awesome. uh, what, what's hilarious is after about four hours, he, he's getting really uncomfortable and he said, I got to go. You got to get up for work. I got to leave. We walk out onto the landing of my apartment. And of course, this is 1979, no, early 1980. And uh, a streaker runs by. <laughs> a streaker. <laughs> I'm serious. And we are serious. Look naked, <laughs> flying through the deal. And I'm thinking. Well, this interview I'm got a, racy just I'm right here. I'm, I'm, living, I, you know, I'm not living for God, but I can't leave this girl alone with a mad man, a crazy man. So I went back into the apartment to protect her. And she leaned in again. And, and he for just started four more hours, it was four o'clock in the morning. Wow. I had an open vision of the cross and I saw the Lord. Wow. 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 And I saw myself in him mm -hmm. and That's all awesome. the wrath of God come on him for all my sins. Amen. That's awesome. And it, I saw my identification. And see, Amen. I didn't know that in at Christ. that time. I just yeah. knew something very supernatural that happened. was happening. <clears throat> and I felt like the Lord said, this is the man you're going to marry. And I thought, it's like, okay, this is too spiritual. We can't think of marriage right now, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. but, but it was something that, that just was ingrained. Uh, awesome. just kind of sealed in me, but I kept it to myself because I knew, again, something supernatural happened because within even an hour of him leaving, it's he's calling me. So it's, now it's 5 a.m. and I've got to get up at 6. <laughs> Have you seen this in the Bible? The whole Bible oh, right. just came alive to wow. me. I knew I was called but didn't know what it all meant because mm -hmm. I had heard God at 9 that I yeah. was called. Uh, and I was just so, it was so real and mm -hmm. overwhelming that I lost all my friends because uh, I was crazy for Jesus. <laughs> I was a awesome. senior in college on a, on a scholarship that got me out of poverty yeah. and an education, and I wound up quitting in my senior year because I lost my passion for tennis. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, I didn't have any friends. Uh, soon I never went out on a date, and she was the only friend I had, so I just decided, I guess I'll marry my best friend. <laughs> It helped that she was smoking hot, but <laughs> it's always a blessing. I would never counsel anybody that way, but I mean, we've mm -hmm. had a beautiful life together. We have four beautiful children and eight now grandchildren. Uh, we've never had a fight. We've definitely had disagreements, and she's needed an attitude adjustment at mm -hmm. times. But <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, you know that's right. <laughs> but 
a, it, it's just been a wonderful life and, and, and relationship and just seeing God not just work in ministry, mm-hmm. but to see him work in our relationship for 38 wonderful mm-hmm. years, to see him work in our children so supernaturally and they're mm-hmm. all connected yeah. to ministry. Yeah. Uh, now our grandchildren. Uh, so my, my path is not the recommended path probably, except for the fact that there was a God factor in there yeah. Yes. It was so supernatural. I, I don't know that everybody will experience things quite that radical, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was real, and our life's been real, and it's been a real joy. It That's has. Awesome. You know, I think, and even going back to really answer your question, yes, we knew there was a call on our lives, but we didn't know what that meant. Mm-hmm. And the last thing we wanted to do was make something happen. So we just started dreaming, just even dreaming ministry. Dreaming what that See, I might don't mean look to interrupt, like. but we, we didn't go out on a, what the world would call a date, but we yeah. went to Bible studies and life groups every single night of the week. We were in church yeah. together. Uh, together. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't thinking marriage at first at all. Mm-hmm. I, no. I really thought that, that this, God used her. She's my friend. I'm, 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 I'm taking off like a rocket here. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was because, though, we did things innocently and accidentally yeah. the right on way. Right. Yeah. With God such a focus in our life That's that great. we saw as we begin to dream, wait a minute. Right. And then there was an attraction. Yes. Yeah. Of course, you have to have an attraction in yeah. marriage. You don't marry somebody you're not attracted to. Yeah. That's not smart. But you don't marry based on just attraction. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Well, no, it just, it, again, it, and I know six months sounds like a short time, and it was. However, just, I feel like God put on a fast track just some <clears throat> things that we had to work out. We had to uh, decipher between emotions and God speaking to us. We had to work through, you know, what is God saying to the both of us mm-hmm. and how does that look and what does that mean? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to work things out myself and am I just attracted to the spiritual side or is there more here? Mm-hmm. Can there be more here? Is there a life to get? Sir, you know, just yeah. through all of those things that you have to work through. Yeah. But God did. Yeah. And said, yes, this is right. And I feel like he put us, kind of put us on a fast track because of where he wanted to take us. The ministry even exploded. Yes. Yeah. So it, it all makes sense looking back. Yeah. yeah. But not so much... When you're in the middle of it. Right, navigating. You, you're truly living by faith. Yeah. So when you um, started ministries, you, you've been about two years, you've been married, and then you started in ministry. Did you have kids yet by that time, or did you start off? Our, our uh, oldest was six weeks old Okay. when we started in ministry. I actually left Florida. We left Florida. We got married in, in Florida and then moved to Oklahoma to go to school. Bible and so school. I so. went to Bible school from, from secular college in my senior year Mm -hmm. to now Bible school. And it was in my second year of Bible school that a door just supernaturally opened for me to minister. I've never asked for a a place to minister. I've never asked for an opportunity. I've never sent out a letter, nothing. And it was actually a Methodist preacher that had cancer that Uh ran into me in the restroom at the college. Uh, there was healing school going on, and so he mm-hmm. had come, and he just met, met me in the restroom of all wow. places, and I was so on fire for Jesus uh, that he, <laughs> he looks at me and he goes, I pastor a Methodist church, and it would be such a blessing to have a young man come that just loves Jesus. Would you, would you just wow. come and speak? Hmm. That's great. And I said, of course I would. And uh, he said, we just don't have any young people. Well, but he wasn't lying. When I got there, no. there were like 40 people, all of them were on Social Security, and... <laughs> I could have said anything and they'd have been happy. Uh, it was like they loved me and respected me and just it just took wow. off from there. And That's he kept great. asking me to come and share. He had two churches. Wow. So he gave me the little one. It had three people. <laughs> and would you just come every weekend and preach for the three? Mm-hmm. And then if I don't feel good, you can take the big one. Yeah. 35 or 40. Mm-hmm. And so sure enough, I'd come every weekend during my second year of Bible school and preach to the three. God exploded it. It grew. And then I'd started ministering to the big church and it grew. And uh, I'm not even a Methodist. Uh That's right. Neither Uh, one of us. We had no idea 
what we were walking into, right. except we felt like God said go. And so She's even all of that had, mm -hmm. had, had issues that we had to deal with in marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you go to school? How do you pe preach on the weekend? Yeah. Were you, so just a lot of marriage and ministry for us were worked out almost at the same time. Yeah. So how did you keep that as a, maybe you're getting ready to say yes. Just the aspect of <clears throat> what were some of the um, priorities that you've established in your life and your marriage through ministry and, and also obviously that's probably been a progression as you've gone. So can, maybe you can take us through some of that progression as well. Yeah, let me, let me share some things about priorities real quick that probably will, will shock a <clears throat> lot of our students. Mm -hmm. uh, something maybe they haven't heard. Uh, I know I've never to this day heard it. Mm -hmm. But it is what God has done in my life. Um, and, and, and so let me, let me deal with the priorities and the issue of priorities and then ask me specifics from there to help mm -hmm. me sure. come back. Because sure. <laughs> I can kind of drift into <laughs> Dwayne's world on those things. Yes. But the bottom line with priorities, and I'm not saying we're wrong. I've taught it this way. You know, we, we teach you know, uh, in a vertical um, assessment of priorities of God, our spouse, Mm -hmm. um, our home, mm -hmm. and then our vocation. And even if you stick with the vertical uh, explanation of priorities, vocation still is down here. And what ministers miss, because our call is so noble, it's so direct from God. Right. Yeah. Yep. I don't think it's ego or a God complex that we have as ministers, though mm -hmm. you can get into that if yeah, you're not careful. Yeah. But I do believe that most ministers believe that this is so noble and it's so eternal we say we don't separate spiritual from secular, but many ministers think what we do is spiritual and what others do is secular, when in fact everything we do is spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is no secular uh, and, and spiritual in God. And so they make ministry the top priority, and the, the wife gets neglected many times, the children certainly get neglected. And so what God, what God has done in my life is, instead of thinking of priorities, God... And keeping God at first place, like we're taught, mm -hmm. and then, then you go down the food chain. Priorities is really God is in the center, and priorities is a wheel mm -hmm. that turns mm -hmm. called the wheel of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is not first place in our life. God is every place yeah. in our life. I love that. That's and good. when you put God in the center like a wheel, a hub of a wheel, mm -hmm. and this is what I want the young people especially to see, because the quicker you learn it, oh, the yeah. learning curve will shorten and success will will come quicker yeah. is that there are seasons in our life that confuse people because of the vertical priority list. Mm -hmm. God will be speaking to you that I want you to focus on one child for a season. Mm -hmm. If you have a child being tempted by drugs and is trying to get your attention yeah. and, and they're screaming out with even disobedience, God may speak to you and he did me. Yeah. He would speak to me that I need to spend special time with one child. They have a need for a short season here. And right now they are the priority. Mm, that's good. And so God is in the middle of that. Yeah. Um, there are times when God has spoken to me that, look, your wife needs you right now for a season. Mm -hmm. And she is the priority and focus in God. Yeah. And other times the church did mm -hmm. become a priority. Yeah. That there's a season the church is going through. It's under demonic assault perhaps. And that might be deep step into deep into waters of spiritual warfare, but there are times in church culture that and seasons where we feel, hey, wait a minute, we're under assault here. Right. Yeah. And we gotta lean in hard for mm -hmm. a short season. So mm -hmm. it's not that Sue's not my top priority second to God, it's that Sue is in ministry with me and this priority God we talk about is saying lean in on the church for a season. Right. Mm -hmm. Other times he's had to adjust me and correct me that wait a minute, you're spending too much time with the church. Yeah. Yeah. She's become a mistress. Yeah. <laughs> that Sue is having to compete with. Right. Right. Mm. And that's not right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I would have to back up. And it's not that I'm shuffling priorities, it's that priorities in life. Life is real and it's a wheel. And today, the church needs me. Tomorrow, my wife needs me. The next day, not all my kids need me. The next day, I've been on the road and I come back and my youngest daughter, mm -hmm. out of all my kids, is very bonding to me. And, and Sue would have to tell me, you know, Angelica missed you more than the other kids and she's been in, off by herself in a corner and she's starting to go introverting. Yeah. And so I would take Can her fishing. 
Mm -hmm. Her and I, when I get back, we're going fishing. I'd take her on the road with me. Mm -hmm. I would take both my girls sometimes yeah. because for that season, because God is first place and every place, right. yeah. He's telling me my kids need me. That's good. That's good. And and I integrated ministry yeah. and family. That's good. Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So those are different concepts for most people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that is kind of how we've learned. Wait a minute. And we worked hard at doing that together. Mm -hmm. Really, absolutely. Even you know, Absolutely. communicating with one another, praying with one another. Yeah. It doesn't matter how I feel today. Yeah. This is what God is saying. Yes. Mm. And this, so this is good. Oh, and I and can't tell you how many times yeah. the Holy Spirit and my wife have led me into all truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all truth and all understanding. Yeah. I got it after she said it. I know Absolutely. the Holy Ghost said, but what says now? <laughs> yeah, women awesome. and wives, that's just a side note. But it is amazing uh, it's not that I'm always wrong. It's not that she hears God better than me or more than me. Not at all. But it is amazing the sensitivity of, of a woman mm -hmm. and a wife to certain aspects of the Holy Spirit that I, I personally feel as, a, as even a man mm -hmm. and even a senior leader, we can, we can get tunnel vision. We can yeah. become yeah. insensitive. Yeah. We can, and so it has been a blessing to, to learn to submit to Sue. The Bible says in... In Ephesians 5, 21, before it talks about women submitting to their husbands, husbands, it says, submit one to another right. in yeah. the fear of God. Fear meaning respect and worship of God, reverence of God. And it's been amazing over the years how submitting to her mm -hmm. uh, has saved me, has, has improved me, has, has changed our church. You That's know, awesome. and I've said some of these things publicly and some men bow up. Well, you know, I'm the head of my my family. Well, mm -hmm. I'm the head of men because Sue <laughs> says so. <laughs> Had a guy tell me one time he wears the pants in his family and I don't know. Sometimes I just don't have patience with people. If I can come back quick and set you straight. But I simply told him, I wear the pants in my family too, but Sue bought them, amen. And I look good in it. Right? And I do look yeah. good in them. Because Sue bought them. But anyway, I, I think the priority thing is a challenge. But I think if you put God every place, mm -hmm. yeah. not like up here, and even your career is way down here. Mm -hmm. No, God's in the middle, middle of yeah. every career. Right. Yeah. I don't care what That's you're good. doing. You were, you were built for that. You were designed for that. And it's as much a ministry, a mechanic that is serving our community, serving families yeah. with their vehicles. That's a ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And, yeah. and it's as noble as anything I That's do. That's good. So. Yeah. And I think that it's so important for a wife to understand that that if she can understand that God really truly is the center, then she can lean in on what God is saying and be okay that the church is the priority today. Yeah. You know, and, and not her. Yeah. Because it's us together. Yeah, if you in if life. you do that, if you're not careful, I I'm not saying it's wrong again to go vertical. Right. Right. But if you're not careful, you can make it sound like, you know, Sue then is the focus every time, everywhere, every place. And that's not necessarily true as you're yeah. filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. There mm -hmm. are seasons. Just like there's a day, thank God, your kids leave. <laughs> right. Man, you got right. food in the refrigerator finally. Yes. You got yes. time exactly. together. Like five right. batches of laundry every day. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I can see even mm. an adjustment in, in her being mm -hmm. a, a higher priority. Right. Even since that season of life, right, yeah. which is neat. Yeah. Uh, so. That's awesome. And now, are you guys and like even in this season? Because I know some people watching they have small kids, and you know there was a season of being at home with the kids and raising kids and doing ministry, and then maybe in a season now where you're more doing ministry full time. So, you know, twenty four seven. Sometimes people are in ministry together 24-7. They do everything together. I know that's how Mike and I, ever since we've been married the mm -hmm. 12 years, it's like every day, all day, everywhere with each other. We're not ever apart. So do you guys have that same type right now? Or how, how does your time frame look with each other on a daily basis? Let me just quick confess a weakness and a uh, a lack of understanding to this day, I'm not sure I'm clear on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can remember Sue actually saying how she wanted to be with me 24-7. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't comprehend that. It's like... You like me that much? I, I don't <laughs> like me that much. <laughs> if I could get away from me, I would have left me a long time ago. I told Sue one time that too, that, hey, look, if you ever want to leave, I get it. 
uh, and just please pack in the bedroom. And what I'll do is I'll go get a suitcase. I'll pack my bag with you because if you're going to leave me, I'm leaving me and I'm going with you. <laughs> so, I, I did struggle with awesome. how could you want to be with me because all I had ever seen is in the world, if somebody wants to be together 24 seven, there's some insecurities mm. or there's some jealousies or there's some on and on. It goes with negative something. things, controlling exactly. issue. No, you're, you're exactly. Right. You're right. That's yeah. right. Watching me like you don't trust me. Or, <laughs> you know, so I didn't get it at first, but mm. I did learn that she really does <clears throat> not just love me. She does like me and that she does want to mm -hmm. be with me. And we couldn't have that all the time because of the kids. So we right. did make right. sacrifices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there were always promissory sacrifices that one day we would right. have the time right. to be literally together 24-7. And now mm -hmm. we, are, we are close to that. So let uh, me ask you about something else because, you know, we've, we've shared this and, and it was actually one of our other leaders that we were talking with the other day. They said, you know, sometimes being in ministry 24-7 they think that people can think that that actually means intimacy, that we're communicating well because we're with each other all the time mm. and that we no. have emotional intimacy and we have sexual yeah. intimacy because yeah. we're with each other all the time. Now, some people How are with each other that? all the time and hate each other <laughs> and they right. fight all the time and they argue all the time. So mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean intimacy and mm -hmm. equate mm -hmm. to in intimacy. It's not just time together that equals intimacy. It is yeah. time together with God. It's time together in love. Yeah. It's time together where we have fun. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to mess this whole interview up probably with this. But <laughs> I, I, I just, I think life is too short mm -hmm. to not have fun. And I'm not talking about being disrespectful mm -hmm. yeah. with our humor. I, I, I want to be careful not to do that. But mm -hmm. I'm just talking about an attitude of life that why is serving God necessarily have to be work all the time? Why yeah. isn't serving God fun? Mm -hmm. While we have to work on our marriage and the road to a successful, happy marriage is under constant construction, Absolutely. we have fun. Yes. Uh, again, I would rather have fun and, and, and be together, happily together, than to be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too many husbands want to be right all the time. I'd rather be happy than right. <laughs> uh, you can be right and unhappy. Yeah, uh, you can right. be wrong and happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we believe that, that intimacy is in loving God, loving each other now, mm -hmm. and, and learning to even in our weaknesses, laugh, uh, the stupid things I do, she doesn't do any. And so when she does <laughs> mess up, I just love it. <laughs> It's like, that how could I ever be mad at her if she messes up? It's like, boy, that's vindication. <laughs> You're not perfect. I appreciate, I appreciate your humility. Uh, I appreciate I'm married You make me a feel better about me. Right. Uh, so so <laughs> I just think people make even working for God miserable, mm -hmm. like a call on their life. And they're I've do it. stressed mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're miserable in serving and seeking God even, fearful yeah. of missing God, mm -hmm. all these things that... And then we can mess up with marriage either by neglecting our marriages, mm -hmm. but we can lean in too hard with trying to have a perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. There are yeah. no perfect marriages. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know if that and helps like any of them I'd like to spin off on that a little bit, and I might be stepping out on a, a little bit of shaky ground here. But when you talk about intimacy, intimacy is so much more than just the act of sexual love. Yeah. It, it's, it, involves, it, it involves, like he said, just even praying together, yeah. um, studying together. It involves uh, working through hard things mm -hmm. together. And to me, that just, that just builds the intimacy level to where then the act of love, is, again, is fun. Yeah. It's, it's a, part of, mm -hmm. a part of just your love for each other, mm -hmm. not just an act. Yeah. And I think some people miss that. And that, that part of the enjoyment of that yeah. is the solical intimacy that we share, the spiritual intimacy that we share, yeah. you know, with each other. Well, I know that was one of the questions, you know, when we were talking to, you know, different people and with staff at the Bible school and stuff and said, so, well, what questions would you ask? And one of the questions that came up, a young lady had said, with ministry being so busy and you're just, you know, morning, noon and night, again, 24 seven in, in relationship, but doing ministry and serving, as far as intimacy, sexual intimacy, is it something always spontaneous or do you actually make a plan? Like we are going to, this is part of our plan 
that you plan it in to make sure that you don't get so busy with life and kids right. and activities and Wednesday night and Sunday night and, oh, we're doing this, that you actually make it a priority? Um, I, I kind of like to call it what we learned to do was maximize moments. Mm -hmm. So early in ministry, um, our schedule went pretty much like this. We had Sunday morning church. Mm -hmm. He would leave right after Sunday, would minister somewhere Sunday night through Wednesday night, get back late or early Thursday morning, have to minister Thursday night, and then it started all over again. Mm -hmm. So I did go through a period of time feeling like, where do I fit in all mm -hmm. of this? Yeah. You know, I have to take care of everything at home by myself. I'm even having to take care of the church by myself. I mean, just, I have to tell you, those were lies of the enemy, but they were very real. They were yeah. very real lies that I had to deal with, mm -hmm. and I didn't see them as lies. I just saw it as reality. Okay, so it was reality, but the lie yeah. was that I was by myself. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That was the lie mm -hmm. that I started believing, and I let it affect me. And... Um, uh, I had to really work through that in the mm -hmm. sense that um, I'm not alone. Yeah. God's with me all the time. I yeah. have a husband. I'm grateful for where God has us. Yeah. God knew this day yeah. would be here. His plans for me and for my family are good yeah. plans. Mm -hmm. There's a direction here. And so what I learned is that, you know, you're not, it, what I'm saying is what that lie did mm -hmm. was it stole time when he was home. Oh, yeah. And, and when I saw that, that, it was, that the enemy was really using it against me to steal time, mm -hmm. it was like, no more. Yeah. I'm going to learn to maximize moments. Moments either on the phone when, when he was away yeah. or moments at home. Now, she's not saying and we so, had phone sex. No. <laughs> Not just, at all. Sorry, just I just to clarify. Clear that up. Yes, please <laughs> clarify that. I don't want to have to deal with this when I'm teaching here on the campus. No. <laughs> but awesome. we learned how to maximize moments. So did we make a plan that, you know, every Friday night was date night no matter what? We tried. Yeah. But because of our situation, we didn't have family around to always take the kids. Or we didn't have... <clears throat> so we learned how... Yeah. to maximize moments together. Yeah, yeah, that's good. To maximize moments as a family. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that worked for us. That's good. Yeah, and I, I just finished a series on Better Together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I dealt with excellent. seven, thank you. And I dealt with seven areas that, mm -hmm. that we've dealt with and worked on. And that as a pastor, you know, if you just pay attention, and yeah. love people, you're mm -hmm. going to learn so much of hurts and pains yeah. and situations and experiences people have. And, mm -hmm. and then you go to the Word, so you're going to grow in the Word, yeah. helping them. And so we just began to see, you know, these areas of marital breakdown and how do we shore them up in our own lives That's good. and then to help others. And one of the major ones is communication. Yeah. And a part of intimacy mm -hmm. is good communication. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at... at at how little we communicate mm -hmm. yeah. and how ineffective as individuals. I mean, we were created in God's image, yeah. the master communicator, yeah. mm -hmm. and yet we communicate in ways many times that are misunderstood, yeah. misread, Absolutely. Uh, inappropriate, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. on and on it could go. And so I think the <laughs> intimacy part of, of marriage that, that is really affected the most mm -hmm. is in communication because one of the hardest things to communicate is your sexuality. Yeah. I mean, I'm it shocked is. I'm not getting embarrassed already. I mean, it's just, it's intimate. It's yeah. personal. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. but yet it's a part of our humanity. It's a yeah. part of our lives. So in the being together a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and she shared a season in our life where we were apart yeah. for those, right. those scheduled things. That wasn't yeah. every week. It was no. every other week, once a month stuff. Yeah. But bottom line is we had to communicate. We had to learn to talk, learn to listen, learn feedback. That's good. Really communicate because... The beauty of sexuality, when it is in God's image, the way He created it for us, is 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 very intimate communication. Yeah, and you'll never have a good sex life mm -hmm. and be fulfilled in your sexuality yeah. if you don't communicate yep. yes. in everyday life yeah. and understand um, nonverbal communication. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Amen. sometimes yeah, and it's different exactly. for different people. It you is. can't her nonverbal communication may be different from right. somebody else's. Yes. So it's, exactly. Uh, yeah. 
but that communicating, and I, I would say if I was to help the students mm -hmm. in, okay, what, what would be something I need to start on immediately in, in a courting type relationship with someone or someone I think I'm going to marry is the ability to communicate in honesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes. it is, it, we live in a culture that is saturated with lies. Yeah. Uh, or presenting yourself uh, phony, in a way, the phony life. identities. This is my, this is my book on that. <laughs> identity theft, by the way. But anyway, all these, all these phony um, identities, all these pretenders, all these insecurities. So I'm coming across to you, mm -hmm. not in an authentic way, because mm -hmm. I want you to like. I mean, right. on and on right. it goes with yeah. lies, dishonesty, and so yeah. if you want to be yeah. happily married, you got to pay the price to tell the truth and. Telling the truth comes with a cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And unless you get married and you start off with, look, we are willing to pay the cost of telling the truth to each other, of being mm -hmm. honest. Now, I'm not talking about being mean or brutal. And, no, no. Uh, but I'm talking about just being honest, tell the yeah. truth, because with it will come a price tag. Yeah. The only way we knew we could honestly do that and mm -hmm. build that honesty was to count the cost of lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you really count the cost of lying and, and what you yes. lose in lying, yeah. yes. that's good. It's worth the the cost now to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 in marriage, people lie to each other. They either lie by deception, which is mm -hmm. forbidden in the scriptures and very clear, lie not one to another, seeing you've put off the old man and all the deceitful lust thereof. But we lie by default, not by deception. Yeah. But right. we'll lie by default in our communications. Like, mm -hmm. how does this dress make me look? I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> I plead the fifth <laughs> because I think, how does my answer make me look? Right. Do you want to really know how that dress makes you look or, 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 or do you want the truth? <laughs> so we had to deal with, don't ask me a question if you don't want the truth. And don't tempt me to lie. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's, it, early it was difficult to be honest. It was. But look, no, you have to you know, learn how to be honest. It's a, because it's a, it's you a can say you're skill. being honest, but you're being mean. Or you yeah. say, or this is just me. Well, no, that's not really yeah. me. That's so yeah. even and having to be honest, even in okay, this and this is an emotion I'm feeling, mm -hmm. and so I need to communicate. And to have to that. learn to and, listen and go, okay, yes. that's the stupidest emotion I've ever heard of. Right. Instead <laughs> right. of coming back with that kind of thing, be you know, learning to be sensitive. Okay, it is your emotion. Right. Yeah. I do believe you feel that. I don't feel that. I don't see that, but I do believe you feel it and see it. As a matter of fact, and I know we have a lot probably to cover, but in learning to communicate and listen to her, it actually developed me subconsciously to learn to listen to my children better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. To hear what they're really saying, mm -hmm. not how stupid it sounds, not, not how you ought to know better, not I've taught you better, not, yeah. but yeah. hear, hear yeah. each other. We don't listen. Yeah. We don't even know communicate. We think communication is talking, and it's not. Communication yeah. is talking, listening, and then understanding. Bringing understanding. Do you feel that the health and, and your relationship with each other has directly affected your ministry? Oh, no doubt. Absolutely. I believe it's biblical, too, mm -hmm. because uh, one of the qualifications that Paul gave Timothy, a young pastor, when you read those 16 qualifications in 1 Timothy 3, I mean... It doesn't even mention doctrine, but yeah. we should yes. have good doctrine. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. It doesn't mention theology. We should have good theology. Right. Yeah. It doesn't mention grace. It, does, it doesn't mention all the things that are vital and important to ministry, but it does talk about character. That's right. yeah. yes. The whole thing's about character. Yes. You know, don't yeah. be a brawler, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, one of them is how can a man rule the church of God that's right. if he can't take care of his own family and have yeah. his children? And that's not talking about children that are adults that, are, mm -hmm. you know, Good accountable ways. to God for their own choices right, now. Right. But he's talking about little children. If you yeah. can't keep them in subjection, if you can't love them. I think what God is saying is if you can't love your wife and you can't love your children and you can't rule that little bitty ministry, I'm like, how are you going to rule these thousands people. of crazies? Right. Yeah. I love people, With but, but people are crazy. Yes. Well, people are yes. crazy. I love yes. them, but they're crazy. Right. And how in the world are you going to manage a thousand crazies <laughs> when you can't manage a two-year-old? That's right. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> so so the, the managing of the two-year, I think God tricked us, to be honest. <laughs> I think he tricked us. God says, if you can handle that two-year-old, you can handle a whole church. I'll give you the yeah. kingdom. I, right. I believe I've raised two functional daughters. If you can raise daughters, you can raise the dead. <laughs> raising the dead is a piece of cake. That's awesome. You're just I dead. raised two 
functional, godly women. And I'm thrilled about it. Hallelujah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, we had about 35 minutes for this, and so it is already completely oh, it's gone. gone. Oh. Isn't it amazing? Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, 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 this is great. This is exactly what we wanted to ask you guys. And and every every interview, you know, is going to have a different dynamics. And we just want to thank you. I know that we have seen, you know, and students have seen <clears throat> in you guys' life that Talking about the marriage and family is such a priority, and we just thank you for that because we've seen in ministry on the mission field, even here in America, that people confuse things. And so thank you so much. And then for if people wanted to listen to some of your series, because I know you have a lot of series on marriage, mm-hmm. on the, the series that you just um, mentioned, where could students go to listen to those? Yeah, uh, all, all you have to do is, is go to either Victory Life Church or Dwayne Sheriff Ministries, and when you come to the home page, uh, just go to the marriage, the marriage tab. And I think I've got like 10, maybe 12 series that will speak to individual needs of marriage and the, the, the gift that God has given us of yeah, marriage. Absolutely. And the, the most recent that'll have videos, a lot of these won't have video. They'll only have audio because they're older. Yeah. But the most recent is Better Together better together. And, and that'll get you a, a great start with the seven areas. Work on these and you can be happily married. Yeah. Well, we just want to thank you guys. We appreciate you taking the time to do this. And thank uh, you for the invite. Yes. Yeah. Now and, you can and, rest and for the yes, rest of the month. Right. That's right. Yes. And, and, and if we need anything and, else, we know we'll just contact Sue. Yes, right. contact right. Sue. Yeah, that's thank just, you. Uh, <laughs> but I want, to, I want to quickly thank you for having a heart for this, yes. for hearing yes. God on this. Yes. And I do believe it is a relevant very Amen. needful message to the church at large. Yeah. And if we can't get it to our own students, That's right. yeah. how are we going to get it to the world? Mm-hmm. On the contrary, if we can get this to our students, Amen. they can take it out. That's right. And yes. we can see this Absolutely. thing reversed, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. The whole dynamic of family being a, a testimony priority. of the glory of God. So. Amen. Well, Amen. thank you guys so thank much. You. And blessings thank on you. your rest.